Hey there, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the recently released approvals app in Microsoft Teams. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to click on the more added apps button in your activity bar, and then you want to search for approvals and click on the approvals app. This is gonna bring up the approvals app add card. And what you wanna do here is go ahead and click on add. This is going to install the approvals app in your Microsoft Teams application, okay? Now, what this does is this brings you into the approvals app user interface. So let's just start off with a quick overview of the user interface. So on the left-hand side, what you can do here is you can see all of the approval requests that you have received. So these are requests that require your approval, and you can also see the requests that you have sent for approval. Okay, now clicking on either of these is going to show you those requests in list format. Um, and you can see here the request title, the status, the created date, uh, the requester, and who the request was sent to. Okay, um, now at the top, you have an option to filter these requests. So you can easily toggle between requested, and this is going to show you requests that are pending approval. Okay, or you can apply some custom filters as well. Okay, now to create an approval request from the approvals user interface, what you want to do is you want to click on the new approval request button. Okay, and what this is going to do is bring up the approval request card. And the first thing that you'll want to do is enter a title for your approval. So this should be descriptive um, and it should indicate what approval you're seeking. So you might say, you know, approve finance report. Okay, and then the next step is to go ahead and select your approvers. Okay, in this case, I'm going to route this approval to myself. Now you can add multiple approvers if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and just quickly type in one of my colleagues' names. And by selecting a secondary approver, what this is going to do is toggle this button that says require a response from all approvers. So if you have multiple approvers and this button is toggled on, that means in order for this request to be approved, you're going to need both or all of your um, approvers to respond. If you toggle this off and you have multiple approvers, then you're only going to need uh, one response that is the first approval, okay? Um, the next step in your approval request is to enter a message, okay? So here you can type any type of um, text content that you want. So I'm going to say, hello, please approve the finance report for publishing, okay? And then you can also add attachments. Now you'll note you don't have to add an attachment. So I can just send an approval request without an attachment if I wanted to, or I can click on add an attachment and I can upload an attachment from my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my finance report. Okay. And then the last step on the approval request card is the option to create your own custom responses. So by default, this is turned off. What that means is that the options that the approvers will see is approve and reject. If you wanna customize those options, you can toggle this on and you can actually enter your own custom responses. Uh, and there is a, I believe it's a 20 to 25 character limit on this. So you could type something like, yes, I approve or no, I don't, okay. Um, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and leverage the default um, responses here. Okay. Um, now to send your approval request, you want to go ahead and click on the send button. You'll see here your request is being created. Okay. Now you'll notice on the sent requests, that request is listed at the top of the list and the status is requested. If I toggle onto the received view, I can see here that this approval request is now at the top of my list. And if I click on it, it's going to bring up the approval request card. Okay, so right off the top, you can see that the status is requested. You can see the title and the message. Okay, you can see the attachment and I can click into this attachment and it's going to open in SharePoint online. And you can see that this re uh, request is pending responses from the two individuals that were listed. Okay, you can also see who requested this approval. Okay, and at the bottom of the request card, you have the ability to put in comments. 
So I'll go ahead and say the report looks good, for example, and I can see my options. I can choose to approve this, I can choose to reject it, or I can cancel this request. You can also access your approval requests from the Microsoft Power Automate dashboard. So logging into flow.microsoft.com, you can see here that the approval request is pending. It's displayed as a card and I can click on this to bring up the approval request card. And you can see here, just like I saw in Microsoft Teams, I can um, you know, choose my response here and I can enter a comment. Now the one advantage to responding to your approval requests from the Power Automate dashboard is when clicking on choose your response, you can see here that I have the option to actually reassign to this approval. So uh, perhaps maybe somebody uh, sent you an approval request and it should have gone to somebody else. I can actually go ahead and just reassign this to somebody else if I wanted to. Okay, so uh, there's a few different ways for you to actually view and approve these requests. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up Microsoft Teams again. The other thing that I want to call out is you'll also notice that when you receive an approval request, it also throws a notification in your activity feed. So you can see here Luigi Acobella sent you a request and I can click on that notification. And again, it's going to bring up the approval card. Okay, um, I'm going to go ahead and approve this request. You can see my response is being submitted. And because again, I sent that approval request to myself, you'll also notice that when a request is approved, it again will also throw a notification in your activity feed and you can easily click on that and see that the status has changed to approve. Okay, so that's how to use the approvals app to view and create new approval requests. Now you can also create approval requests from other places in Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to show you quickly how to create an approval request in the form of a channel post. What you wanna do is you wanna click on your Teams icon and you want to click into one of the channels of your Teams. So I'm going to do this in the, the general channel of my leadership team. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the new conversation button. Okay, and you can see here, that there is an approvals icon. So if I click on this approvals icon, this is again going to bring up the create a new approval request card that I can fill out. So approve channel post, for example, and just like we filled out, you can go ahead and fill this card out. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and send this. And you can see here that I have created an approval as a channel post, okay? And I can go ahead and I can click on view details of this approval request right from my channel post. And again, it's going to bring up the approval card here, okay? Now you can also initiate approval requests in one other way in Microsoft Teams, and that is through chats. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the chat icon Okay, and I am going to pull up a chat with my colleague Diego. Okay, and just like we saw with the channel post, I can see at the bottom of the compose box, I also have the approvals icon here. And again, I can click on that approvals icon, fill out the card and send an approval in a chat message. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this again. And you can see now that again, I've created this approval card right in this chat and I can click on view details to actually bring up the card. Okay, so that is how to use the approvals app in Microsoft Teams. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please like it, please drop a comment below and please be sure to subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest Microsoft Teams tutorials. Thanks for stopping by, talk soon.